My dear friends, colleagues, mentors, students, seafarers, and global citizens. My name is Captain Shaukat Mukherjee, and I'm the founder of the Naval Connection. And I welcome you to the Future Skills Maritime 2022 Global Virtual Conference from Mumbai, India. This moment is monumental for the Team Naval Connection. The reason that you're watching us live now in maritime industry's largest global conference on future skills is because of the engagement and tremendous support which we have received from the global maritime fraternity. Till today, we've had more than 2,000 registrations on our platform from over 30 different countries. Additionally, thousands will be watching the FSM live today and tomorrow on our Facebook and YouTube channels. I have been also informed that companies have shared this conference links with seafarers on board so that they too do not lose out on the opportunity to learn and share through this global initiative. The implications of this FSM 2022 global conference reaches far more than it appears. It is a living evidence that our maritime industry is a truly global one. Whether it is a seafarer joining from India or Philippines or UK or Africa or any other parts of the world, world once the seafarer sets foot on board the ship, he or she becomes a part of one team and one goal, a truly global team, a team having a common goal of sustaining the global economy, never letting it down or fall, no matter what the situation is at any point of time. And that is the reason why today, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to dedicate FSM 2022 to the quintessential seafarer, the mascot of our maritime industry, for their undying contribution and sacrifice. It is because of a seafarer that the ship sails on the water and not merely because of its engine power. The Naval Connection pledges its support to the contribution of each seafarer who sails on the high seas. And with this vision, we had created the Naval Connection Virtual Academy. When we started off amidst the raging pandemic in 2020, with the vision of building value for the future, we started with just a single virtual workshop and a handful of students. From there, TNC Virtual Academy has trained more than 4,000 seafarers in the last one and a half years on various skill development workshops for both deck and engine officers. But that was not enough and we want to go on and on. And we are launching our first industry's first ratings bootcamp, an enhanced four days extensive skill development package for deck and engine ratings. And this is scheduled in February end launch this year. The demands of the future skilled maritime industry requirements motivates us at every step to innovate. And now we are on the verge of launching our very own learning management system, which will be not just any other training platform, but a complete forum on collaborative learning. We are hugely excited to come out with these initiatives, which will strengthen the skills of seafarers and maritime professionals to an extent which will empower them to take on the future of work demands. It is through conferences such as the Future Skills Maritime and the Technology in Maritime, TIM, another flagship event in the TNC calendar, that we are able to understand the needs of the industry and deliver key skilling tools for seafaring development. This is a moment where I would personally like to thank all our sponsors and supporters who found it worthwhile to engage with the FSM 2022. Qatar Airways is the biggest name for mariners air travel. Their contribution towards operating chartered flights for seafarers during the COVID-19 pandemic has been monumental in building seafarers trust and maritime professionals trust in the seafaring community. Don't miss out on visiting the Qatar Airways booth at our FSM exhibition arena. We thank Ocean Technologies Group, the world leaders in maritime training for their continual engagement with FSM and TIM. We will hear a lot from them today and tomorrow at this conference in the panel discussions. Would also like to thank Bernard Schulte for their support. We thank FOSMA, MASA, NUSI, and all other associations for walking with us side by side, always with their constant support and encouragement. I would like to now proudly introduce to you and thank all our dignitaries 
at this inaugural session and request each one of them to, to speak a few words. Starting with Mr. Arn Jan Flolo, Consul General of Royal Norwegian Consulate General Mumbai. Can I have the introduction of Arn Jan Flolo, please, to speak a few words? Starting with Mr. Is Arn Norwegian Jan Flolo, Consul General in Consul Mumbai General of Royal since Norwegian September Consulate 2020. General Mumbai. The Royal Norwegian the Consulate General in Mumbai covers Yang three Flolo, important please. Indian yes. maritime states of Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Goa. Mr. Flolo has Yang been with the Consul Norwegian General Ministry of Foreign General Affairs, General MFA, since, since, since 1999 and has served in different Royal capacities Norwegian including Consul advisor, Mumbai, section for South Asia, MFA in Indian Oslo, Deputy Head of Office, Gujarat, Office for Democratic Goa. Institutions and Mr. Human Mr. Rights Flolo Office in Montenegro and Senior Advisor Section for Peace and Reconciliation, MFA in Oslo, to name a few. Mr. Flolo has also served as First Secretary in the Royal Norwegian Embassy in Kathmandu and Bangkok. Mr. Flolo holds a master's degree in comparative politics from the University of Bergen, Norway. The Naval Connection warmly welcomes Mr. Arn Jan Flolo as a part of the inaugural team at the FSM 2022. Thank you very much. Um, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would first of all like to thank uh, the organizers, the Naval Connection, for inviting me once again to take part in one of its conferences and to give a keynote speech today on Future Skills Maritime. As the organizers have stated, the maritime industries are changing rapidly. One important question is how training and skills can keep up. I would like to thank the organizers for putting this issue on the agenda and for initiating a discussion on needs and expectations for skill development in the maritime sector. Norway is a leading ocean nation. Our coastline is one of the longest in the world. And the marine areas we manage are more than five times as large as the land. Many thousands of Norwegians spend their work days in one of the ocean industries within oil and gas, maritime and seafood sectors. These industries are so large that they account for nearly 70% of Norwegian export earnings. We are currently the fourth largest shipping nation in the world measured in value, after China, Japan, and Greece. And we are one of the most advanced. We are driven forward by high quality technology development in a very harsh climate at the North Sea. This introduction brings me to the issue of the rapid changes in the maritime industries. It is driven by new and green technology, shaping the future. I would like to highlight a few areas of emerging technologies as seen from our side. One, digitalization. This includes monitoring of ships machinery remotely with electronic report output to shore-based management. In the wider maritime industries, it also includes servicing of subsea installations remotely at any time without the need for comprehensive operations with service vessels and divers. Two, alternate, alternate fuels like hydrogen and ammonia, as well as battery solar wind power for ships and including shore power. Here we are working together with DG Shipping here in Mumbai and port authorities, JMPT and MPT, and also bringing in Norwegian technology and experience. Number three, Automation and autom autonomous ships. Uh, Norway has just launched the world's first uh, fully electric and autonomous container vessel with zero emissions called the Yara Birkeland. Yara, as many of you know, is a world leading fertilizer company from Norway. With this container vessel, Yara will reduce diesel powered truck haulage by 40,000 journeys a year. Kongsberg Maritime, another world leading company in mar maritime technology and with the Indian headquarters here in Mumbai, is responsible for the development and delivery of all enabling technologies at Yara Birkeland, including the sensors 
and integration required for remote and autonomous ship operations. I would also like to highlight the two autonomous electric ferries which are being built currently by Cochin Shipyard here in India for the Norwegian client OSCO, which is in the retail segment. This is also in cooperation with Kongsberg Maritime Systems, uh, or deliver, uh, Kongsberg Maritime is delivering the, the uh, electric si electronic systems, and it's also built under the Norwegian company DMV classification. The fourth area I would like to mention is 3D printing for marine parts. You know, you can send your spare parts in a file. Digitization and sending parts on demand and digital warehousing. Number five, smart ropes. Digital mooring systems for ships, automated system to ensure mooring ropes which keep the ship tied to the jetty are maintained at right tension, adjusting for the tide and for the ship depths, uh, etc. As I mentioned, um, uh, alternate fuels above, I would like to add a few areas focusing on emissions abatement technology, including green initiatives in development of new ships. Number one, scrubber technology, with, uh, which is exhaust gas cleaning system for reducing emissions. Two, low sulfur content fuel, leading to cleaner engines and longer maintenance intervals. Three, new fuels, LNG, ammonia, methanol, hydrogen. I mentioned Yara above, and uh, you would find them several places in this value chain. As a fertilizer company, they are both a producer of hydrogen and ammonia, as well as on the application side for vessels and trucks. Number four, dual fuel ships. It can use conventional oil fuel as well as LNG. Kongsberg Maritime provides comprehensive equipment packages for hybrid operation. Number five, um, I would also mention the, the game-changing proactive hull cleaning solution called Hull Skater, involving Jotun, uh, the Norwegian paint uh, producer, um, and Kongsberg Maritime, resulting in more energy efficient operations and reduced CO2 emissions. I would also like to add that Norway and India have entered into a partnership on hydrogen where we are collaborating with India to develop and scaling solutions and bringing prices uh, of hydrogen down. We are also sharing experience and expertise from a hundred year old history in Norway on the production, storage, transport and application of hydrogen. With the port collaboration and the collaboration on shipbuilding, etc., we are well placed to work together with India on the application side as well and thereby covering the whole hydrogen value chain. All of the above, all of the points I've mentioned above are relevant for training and skills development. It is important that training and crew certification are keeping pace with new developments in technology, processes, fuels, etc., and that this is always incentivized. There are about 3,000 Indian seafarers on Norwegian registered ships. India is an important recruitment base for Norwegian ship operators. Norwegian companies like Wilhelmsen have a long history of working together with Indian training and education institutions and of recruiting Indian seafarers. This collaboration, as well as collaboration with technology providers and the shipbuilders, is important for keeping up with the rapidly changing shipping and maritime industries. I wish you all the very best in your uh, deliberations, uh, deliberations uh, in this conference and uh, would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. A big thank you, Anyan, for your meticulous speech, a great learning experience for all the students and all the seafarers and particularly very, very good to know the lot of collaborations that are happening between the two countries, a lot of uh, trades and a uh, lot of developments which are happening. And I'm sure the future is very, very bright. So thank you once again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we will uh, want to introduce to you Kartik Vishwanathan. But before I call him up uh, to say a few words, I would like to play a couple of videos 
for you all to see how Qatar Airways is changing people's lives every day. Can we have uh, the video, please? <laughs> for showing this video. Uh, I would like to uh, call upon Kartik, but uh, for all of you, Kartik is heading uh, the Southeast uh, Asia for Qatar Airways operations. And Qatar Airways has made a huge name for themselves as also a huge support of uh, the tremendous amount of work which Qatar Airways has done during the pandemic. So before we hear Kartik, here is uh, a small introduction of Kartik Vishwanathan. In the Indian subcontinent region for Qatar Airways Commercial Division. He is an airline industry professional with over 22 years of experience in the field of commercial sales, distribution channels, airline revenue management and systems. The early years of his aviation life were focused on developing and building sustainable business models ranging from improving efficiency to cost reduction and revenue maximization. Post transition to sales and business development, new horizons were opened and he learned the art of balancing numbers with business relationships. Living by the mantra of you are as good as your team, he's a firm believer in coaching, mentoring and empowering the team to give their the best and confident decision making business decisions while embracing mistakes and moving forward from derived learnings. The contribution of Qatar Airways in providing chartered flights for mariners during the COVID-19 pandemic and enabling sign-on and sign-off of seafarers from ship is a monumental effort in keeping the economy running at the most challenging times. The Naval Connection warmly welcomes Karthik Vishwanathan as a speaker of the FSM 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Karthik Vishwanathan speaking at the FSM. Hello, everyone. Uh, firstly, I'd like to wish uh, everyone who's connected around the globe a great 2022. We just hope we push, put everything behind mm -hmm. us. Uh, before I start, I'll also like to share my gratitude with uh, DG Shipping, Cosma, Masa, and all our partners. And lastly, and not the least, Naval Connection for organizing this two-day maritime global industry event. Uh, we are... Uh, very proud and happy to be associated with this event and looking forward to an engaging two-day session. So before I start, I just thought I'll take a look back about what we've been doing in the past two years. Uh, to start, this pandemic has greatly affected the global uh, air traffic since March 2022, where travel had largely reduced to need-only basis for travelers worldwide. While most of the airlines decided to pause operation, Qatar Airways was one of the very few international airlines that operated throughout the pandemic as our mission is to bring people home safely and provide global connectivity. The seafarer segment, especially in India and Southeast Asia, has been a very key customer segment for us as seamen worldwide had, had to carry on their offshore deployment overseas. Uh, I still uh, remember when the first discussion we had with uh, our partners, including Cosma Masa during May of 2020, about our first charter operation, we never thought that the magnitude of the operation is going to be something which is going to be monumental, both for the industry and for an airline like us. So we have carried more than 500,000 seafarers and offshore workers since 2020, including repatriation and crew changes and have had more than 140 charter operations since June of 2020 till end of 2020. Just to show you some magnitude, uh, this wouldn't have been possible without the continuous effort and support from DG Shipping, FOSMA, MASA, other agencies, our partners, and the Indian embassies across the globe. So 
a big round of uh, applause for them and we, we would like to share our gratitude with them. Uh, to tackle the pandemic situation, Qatar Airways had to adopt quickly, make changes to very customer centric to address health and safety concerns. Many of these are also applicable to other passengers, but we also recognize specific needs of seafarers. Uh, Pre-pandemic, uh, the focus has always largely been timely travel, shortest distance, but pandemic showed us how safety becomes the forefront in travel or in any passenger moving across any segment. Uh, with the global pandemic, the key concern for most passengers, mariners included, was mainly safety, flexibility, and reliability. I'll take you a few uh, points as to what we have done to ensure that we continue to be market leaders, we continue to evolve, we continue to invest in technologies to ensure that we are always uh, ahead of our uh, competition. So when we started or when we embarked on the journey, we realized at the start of the pandemic that the passengers or our partners are not just looking for uh, travel, but they also need the assurance in case something doesn't work. How do we ensure that their uh, money is safe? So we came with, we were the first one in the industry to come up with some very flexible policies, ensuring that uh, even if the passengers are not traveling, they will get their money back in no time. Uh, second was uh, safety protocols. Both Qatar Airways and our hub, Ahmad International Airport, received five-star COVID rating by Skytrax. And approximately 99.98 of our passengers have traveled COVID-free. The fact that Qatar Airways has been operating throughout the pandemic has given us the experience and the expertise implementing the best air aviation hygiene practices, both in air and on ground. We have led aviation industry standards by using latest technologies to combat pandemic. Sometime in September of uh, 2020, Qatar Airways began the first global carrier to operate Honeywell ultraviolet cabin system, safety system, further advancing our hygiene measures on board. In clinical tests, UV lights have shown to be capable of inactivating various viruses and bacteria when provide, properly applied. We also launched the touch-free in-flight entertainment system in February this year to further minify contact to safeguard our passengers health as they can now use their own mobile devices to navigate the in-flight entertainment system. Uh, in March of 2021, Qatar Airways became the first Middle Eastern airline to trial the IHR Travel Pass Digital Passport mobile app. So we are leading in technology in aviation. Uh, Lastly, assign a way to show our gratitude to this particular industry. Qatar Airways became the first and the only airline in the world to have a dedicated lounge at our uh, hub, Hamad International Airport for mariners and offshore workers. Uh, we understand the needs of the segment and we realize that we need to do something uh, for a segment who we feel are part of essential services. So it's a way for us to show our gratitude. It's a dedicated lounge at Doha's Hamad International Airport that provides lounge access for all our passengers, marine passengers and offshore passengers who are transiting via Doha. They can stay on the lounge. They can use the facilities for shower, meals, rest, uh, internet, so that they can be uh, safe and carry on with their onward journey. So I'm looking forward to an engaging uh, two-day session. Uh, we will also be having a session tomorrow for uh, understanding the needs of the seafarers. I'm looking forward to this uh, uh, Q&A session tomorrow and uh, looking forward to uh, meeting most of you in our booth today. So lastly, uh, Shokat, I'd like to uh, share my gratitude and a big uh, thank you note to you for organizing this event and uh, involving Qatar Airways to be part of this event. Thank you so much. Looking forward to meeting you. Well, thank you, Karthik, uh, for your engagement and association with the Naval Connection and Future Skills. And uh, this is uh, to tell all the seafarers who are watching us and who are hearing us live now at the platform and also from both ships. If you are in Qatar, if you are in Doha, if you don't forget to go and uh, enjoy the uh, dedicated seafarers lounge. And we have some pictures there in the Qatar Airways exhibition booth. So you can visit the exhibition booth in the Qatar Airways in 
in the exhibition arena and download those images and watch and just enjoy. And if you have any queries, you can directly contact Qatar through their booth. So, so Kartik, yes, we are looking forward to you speaking at tomorrow's session as well and see if there's challenges in the session number three. And uh, our next speaker uh, in the inaugural session is uh, none other than Captain Mohammed Al Ali, uh, Senior Vice President of Offshore Logistics at Adnoc. Welcome, Captain Ali. Can we have Captain Ali's introduction, please? Captain Mohammed Al Ali is the Senior Vice President of Offshore Logistics at Adnoc, Logistics and Services. In his current role at Adnoc LS, he oversees the commercial logistics and operational activities of the ports, offshore supply and support fleet to provide end-to-end -end offshore logistics solution to the customers including warehousing, material handling, port and offshore supply operations. He has over 25 years of successful experience in oil and gas and shipping. He started his career as a deck cadet with National Gas Shipping Company Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of Adnoc in 1996 and rose to become the first UAE national master on an LNG carrier in 2008. Captain Al Ali was the senior vice president ship management at Adnoc Logistics and Services since 2013. In his previous role at Adnoc LS, he was overseeing the operations of Adnoc LS shipping fleet, including LNG and LPG carriers and oil tankers, as well as chemical, sulfur and dry bulk carriers and containers. He spearheaded a number of joint energy efficiency and optimization projects. Captain Al Ali holds an executive master's degree in business administration from Zaid University and a bachelor's degree in maritime business and management from John Moore's University in Liverpool, UK. The Naval Connection proudly presents Captain Mohammed Al Ali as a part of the inaugural team at the FSM 2022. Welcome, Captain Al Ali, and we would uh, love to hear from you a few words, and everybody is watching and hearing you. Please. Thank you, Shaukat. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and good morning to everyone. It is a pleasure to speak here at the FSM Conference 2022, one of the most respected forums for the maritime workforce and technology in the region. I'm looking forward to the discussions uh, and to the knowledge sharing with the respected colleagues and peers present here today. So a special thanks to the organizers for creating this valuable platform for all of us. We all share a sense of relief that the perfect storm that hit our industry two years ago is clearing. And even as the world faces another wave of the pandemic, it simply lost its elements of surprise. We all know now much more than what we used to two years ago. But nothing exceeds the sacrifice of our seafarers and their families that had to actually make going through this pandemic. I would like to start our discussion today by honoring their contribution and their relentless efforts in the face of the challenge. Nevertheless, the pandemic is still ongoing and it's erratic and unpredictable nature is causing a lot of uncertainty in the world. In the UAE, we are fortunate that the timely and prudent policies of our government have helped to alleviate some of the pain. The bottlenecks in the logistics chain and at ports has increased the charter rates of container vessels of over $100,000. The operators of the bulk carriers are enjoying a good market too. On the other hand, the tanker market is still going through historical tough periods. The challenges we face are global and we must fight them together in order to restore the true normality. The fundamentals of our industry are strong. So make no mistake that it will survive and thrive. Also on the upside, there is a higher rate of adoption of new technologies. The development of digital infrastructure and the resurgence of the smart ship concepts. There is no doubt that the longer term disruptors to the shipping industry are AI and big data, which we must embrace to push our industry forward. This will require us to upskill 
the present workforce to be able to run the future ships. It will also create new employment opportunities that will be necessary with this transformation. Adnuk LNS has already made considerable progress as it transitions to a fully integrated logistic model, effectively becoming an end-to-end -end logistic provider by creating one unified and efficient platform, a single platform to manage the most complex operations. Please mark my words. It will revolutionize offshore oil and gas logistics in the region by utilizing technology to support interface service-based contracting, demand and service aggregation results fully. All operations rely on digitally enhanced monitoring and AI enhanced planning. The streamlining complexities and unlocking substantial efficiencies through digitization. It plans the work of over 2000 logistic professionals who manage the flow of critical supplies to the offshore operations and operates over 120 offshore vessels. That is more than any other single integrated fleet in the world. But the integrated logistics does not just deliver supplies. It also manages the flow of the most critical aspect of our operation, and that is people. I'm very proud of the fact that we, the phase one of the integrated logistics was successfully launched at the height of the pandemic. It shows us that nothing should stop progress. It places Adnukerenes at the forefront of the integrated logistics market in the region and empowers us to cater to Adnuk's downstream growth and enables us to respond quickly to shifting market needs and dynamics with great agility and in real time. In every sector, success lies at the convergence of people, process, and technology. Adnuk NNS will continue its innovation to provide unrivaled efficiency, customer experience, and enhanced environmental performance. I believe the agenda for today's conference is very interesting, and I look forward to this interaction and exchange of our ideas as always. Once again, I would like to thank the organizer, especially Mr. Shaukat for this kind invitation. And I would uh, uh, be very happy for a very successful interaction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Captain Al Ali for your speech. And I'm sure it's a great learning experience for everybody who heard you. Uh, I would like to mention here to all ladies and gentlemen, all, all the students, uh, the thousands of students who, who will be watching this. Everybody, we will give it a time, just give it some time and, and run these speeches on your uh, inside your mind and come out with a few questions. We will be having a five minutes uh, session, uh, question answer session at the end after we uh, have uh, inaugurated the FSM. And uh, this is a time when you can put, put forward your thoughts and questions and use the live Q&A session and uh, you can, and we will come back to each speaker if there are any questions from them. Uh, our next uh, uh, speaker today needs actually no official mention. The, he needs no introduction. Um, I've always looked up to him as a mentor and we've grown up seeing Captain Passi uh, mentoring uh, students like us in the maritime industry, not only us, uh, not only me, but thousands of other students who've looked up to him, seafarers who've looked up to him. He's been a huge monumental figure in the Indian shipping industry and also the global shipping industry and uh, made a huge change in the way uh, seafaring happens across the world. So before I say anything else, I can I can just go on talking a whole whole day on Captain Passi before I say, for those of you, um, uh, this is a very brief introduction of Captain Naveen Passi. Captain Naveen Passi joined T.S. Dufferin in the 1970-72 batch and did his apprenticeships with Jayanti Shipping and Shipping Corporation of India. He sailed in SCI till 1978 and later joined volume ship management as chief officer in the same year and subsequently got command in 82. Thus began his illustrious career in volume as he was appointed port captain in the year 97 and finally settled ashore as director of volume India in 2003. He took over as the managing director of volume India in 2004 and served in this position 
till 2017, after which he served as the chairman till he superannuated in 2019. Captain Passe also held chairman position in FOSMA and FMIRO for three consecutive terms along with the global head of the Wallam Foundation role. In his illustrious career spanning several years, he has held various other leadership positions in the industry such as Chairman of Norwegian Business Association of India, member of several Government of India task forces and trade delegations. Captain Naveen Passe has been one of maritime industry's biggest names and continues to serve as mentor to the FOSMA board. The Naval Connection is proud to host Captain Naveen Passe at the inaugural session of the FSM 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Captain Naveen Passi today speaking at the inaugural session at the FSM 2020. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, actually, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, for the multitude of people who are around the globe tuned in and who are listening. First of all, Shogat, uh, I think your words, uh, or at least uh, those that have introduced me, are way beyond my uh, own humble capacity. But thank you anyway, and uh, I take it as a pleasure to have been associated with uh, the Noble, uh, with the Naval Connection, and uh, and also with your forum and the, the multitude of things that you've been doing over the years. Uh, it's an honor to have seen it grow and uh, mushroom from a little seed, and grow today into what it is. Um, the importance of maritime transportation as an indispensable instrument of global trade through connecting producers, manufacturers, consumers in global manner will continue to grow. Besides the technological developments, particularly with rise to the new digital industrial technologies known as perhaps industry four, as we call it, are starting to reshape the future of maritime industry faster than ever. The envisioned growth and rapid technological advances in maritime transportation will create need for a newly skilled, competent, and motivated workforce. Additionally, the increasing digitalization and automation of the shipping industry will require different and more technologically advanced knowledge and expertise than today's shipping culture culturally has. Just to go back a little bit with how fast things move, in the late 90s, uh, I was at a board meeting in, in the company office in Hong Kong. And there, there was a presentation on Vision 2020. And we said, wow, 2020, and we are already discussing this, and this is only the turn of the century. But you know what? Although it was many eons ago, 2020 has come, and really, it's already gone. And we are way past that. So eyes down now for 2030. And what does that hold for us? It is highly likely that many of us, for many of us, and who, especially the younger lot who are listening into this, uh, into this conference, that jobs that didn't even exist yet is something that you will be doing. And we're not talking about building flying cars or developing the world's first time machine. The world of work is evolving quickly, which means you have to figure out how to prepare for a future job role that is impossible to predict. So how do you do that? Obviously, there aren't any crystal balls that tell us exactly what skills will be needed and what will not be needed. But what strikes out is the fact that apart from technological skills and technical skills, the requirement will also focus in the building of our core strength towards sustenance and adaptability. Despite a report by the World Economic Forum in 2018 suggesting robot automation will create more jobs than they displace, you still will do well to keep up on top of your creative skills and maintain an innovative mindset. The question to be asked here is, do we have the ability to adapt to change and conceptualize complex multiple ideas all at once? In my opinion, this can be done, not singularly, but on a multitude of platforms through cognitive flexibility, through digital literacy and computational thinking. Another factor that comes as a huge point of debate is the training of our scholars themselves. Who will train the trainer? Where do we get when we're talking about futuristic uh, you know, job profiles? So who will actually take those uh, requirements and who will build up the trainers to be able to train our future generation to be competent and to be ready when the time actually comes? 
how would this happen, especially when we do not know what to expect in the future? I mean, if Newton hadn't seen the apple fall, would there not have been gravity? It would have been there. It's there in the background. It's there for us to, to comprehend. It needs somebody to define and give it a term and give it a, a, a vision. And I think that's what we are looking for in looking to see what happens in the future. Eventually, the future will unfold no matter what we do and what we should not be doing. So let's not fret about things and say, oh my God, what's going to happen and we're going to lose our job. No, we need to prepare ourselves and we need to be ready. How do we get that readiness? Well, one thing is that this ongoing pandemic has taught us is not to rely on just the present and neither just the future because we have no real knowledge on what is going to come up next. The world is full of surprises. What can we do and what we need to do is to secure our present and work towards making it a better moment at each step. In the world of employment too, I've heard some people speak or building of building a futuristic workforce. Do you think that this is possible, especially when our knowledge of what the future is, is so, I'm not going to say limited, but it is so unpredictable. In my view, we should not expend energies uh, in creativity in trying to build the workforce of the future, simply because the future right now doesn't exist. We need to be flexible. We need to be able to adapt. We need to be able to look at the future and conceptualize and see how we are going to tackle with it. Constant General Flolo spoke about the, the emerging green technologies he's given us. And, you know, Norway has really been, I know my, my own association with, uh, you know, uh, the Norwegian uh, the system, the Norwegian's commitment to uh, the green revolution, to uh, making the environment into a better place. All of these things I've been associated with very closely, and it is there to sustain because if we are going to go into the future and if we are going to leave the world a better place for our children and for the new generation, we need to take all those things into account. Karthik spoke about the dynamics of, uh, you know, of transport and how this thing is changing. Mr. Captain Mohammed Ali spoke about the, the artificial intelligence that is going to be so uh, vital to our future going inside. The, we need to combine all of these things. Over the next few days, the next two days, in fact, the Future Sills Maritime will host many professionals and experts from across the world. This forum is a great opportunity to share and exchange ideas and vision on what we want the future to be, rather than just the discussion on what it should be. Let us create a world of our choice rather than become mere slaves to, to destiny and say, well, that's the future. No. We need to focus, we need to see where we are going, we need to see the key words again, I repeat, sustainability is what we need to do. Uh, how we are going to do this is something that the experts, I, I don't claim to be an expert on how we are going to do it. I know that there is a need to be done. And uh, the need is the mother of invention and of actually making things happen. Another skill which in my opinion would pay up pivotal role in shaping our lives as we tread towards the unknown is emotional intelligence. As this is commonly termed, describes the ability to be aware of, control and express the own emotions and those of others. While the world gets more digital, we have to get better at understanding each other. Together with cultural literacy, it can help in many fields of a professional career and can be crucial for team building and company culture. In the four decades of maybe even more that I have traveled far and wide and have met and interacted with people from various diverse backgrounds, fields, jobs, people who have spent their lives creating a change in the environment and other people's lives, these people all matter. And one amongst these are the people whom, without whom, as we know, 50% of the world would starve and the other one would just freeze to death. The people that keep this going are our beloved seafarers. We've undergone two years of pandemic, which I can't tell you how bad it's been. Um, the people who actually have not been in the throw of it have not really experienced how agonizing and how terrible it has been for especially our seafarers who've been away from family, away from uh, their loved ones for 
you know, periods which we never could comprehend earlier. Uh, I want to place on records because having worked in the background in the initial stages of how it was done, I want to place on record uh, the maritime industries, especially in India, and also being associated with IMEC and the international industry. I want to place on record our severe thanks, uh, profound and heartfelt thanks uh, to so many people who, who stepped up to the plate. Uh, one of them is Qatar Airways, who's sitting right over here and who went above and beyond the call of duty. I think uh, the decisions sometimes uh, were taken were absolutely out of the box thinking. And we want to thank you. We want to thank all of the other people who have supported uh, the maritime industry, the seafarers to actually go from where they were stuck to coming home, to coming to a safe environment. Uh, I wish to thank the organizers of this forum and I know that over the next two days, we are all going to gain a tremendous amount of knowledge. Uh, Shokat, once again, thank you for spearheading this. Thank you for bringing, making it all possible. And uh, more than anything else, thank you for inviting me uh, to be a part of this August Forum. All the best. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Naveen Pasi, it's such an inspiration and motivation to hear Captain Pasi speak all the time. And... Um, now I will ask him, I will request him to do the honors of inaugurating this. But before that, I would just want to tell you, we've built this uh, enhanced uh, 3D platform to, to enhance uh, networking amongst uh, fellow individuals and maritime professionals. You have the selfie booth. Please invite your friends and family also and take a selfie together at the selfie booth. You can write your ideas and thoughts in the scribble wall. Go and visit uh, the uh, exhibition arena where you can go into the OTG booth, Qatar Airways booth, the email connection boot and the Bernat Schulte boot also. And we have a very, very uh, important thing. We have a, we've created a networking lounge. So there, if you want to connect with fellow individual professionals or anybody from, you know, who's visiting the platform, you can directly connect to them at the networking lounge. So have your way through, enjoy yourselves. Meanwhile, put in your questions uh, till we, uh, we will, like I said, we will have five minutes uh, uh, open to uh, the audience questions, keep it running, and we will come back to the speakers with the questions. Meanwhile, it's uh, time now, the moment that we are all waiting for. Before this, I would like to personally thank uh, Anya and Flolo, uh, Captain Mohammad Ali and Kartik, and of course, Captain Naveen Pasi for gracing this wonderful occasion in the inaugural session of the FSM. And uh, with all your blessings and support, I would want to request Captain Passi now to officially de declare the FSM, the Future Skills Maritime 2022 open. And then we have a small video after he declares it open. Sir, can you do the honors and declare our FSM open, please? Thank you. Shokat, uh, an event of this magnitude uh, is too large for me to, uh, to, to declare open uh, singularly. Uh, what I want to do is uh, say that I am going to do this on behalf of uh, the other uh, luminaries in this room. Uh, His Excellency, the Council General, Norway, uh, Captain Muhammad Ali, uh, Karthik, yourself, and more than anything else, on behalf of every single seafarer of today and of the future, uh, on all of your behalfs, I hereby declare the Future Skills Maritime FSM 2022 open. Thank you very much.
all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and make some noise. And uh, thank you, Captain Pasi, and thank you, everybody in the uh, four speakers in the uh, inaugural panel for collectively declaring the FSM Open. And uh, a great moment for all of us. And the next two days, we'll see a lot of learning and sharing with, uh, between uh, uh, fellow individuals. And we hope to give you a report on this and the feedback of this, uh, this uh, whole FSM will go to the shipping ministry and also to the IMO headquarters. So now I would want you to take a, a few moments and to think about what uh, each speaker said. If you, you can use the live uh, Q&A button icon and to put in your thoughts and share your ideas and uh, put in a few questions if you want to ask a few things. We are just getting warmed up. Uh, it's the first session of today, but uh, like I said, it's uh, very rare we have uh, so many dignitaries under one uh, under one roof in the virtual roof, and this is a uh, this is a great moment for you to uh, ask uh, if there is any queries of if there is anything that you want to share with the speakers. This is it. So take a few moments and you can put it up in the live. I will request uh, my team members to just check the live uh, the Q and A button for any any questions, please. Uh, I had one person sending me a WhatsApp a message while this was going on, and this was directed to Captain Pasi. So there's one seafarer, I think he's riding from the ship uh, because he says I'm on board. And uh, he says, of course, uh, he must be knowing you well. He says, uh, with the advent of technology, how is the mentoring of the seafarers uh, going to be done uh, for future technologies? You want to take this, sir? Yes, yes, sure. Um, mentoring encompasses a, a broad, uh, you know, spectrum of things. But I think uh, if I'm going to deduce something on what the seafarer is looking for, it is what is the future of, I think, the skills training and how is it going to be in terms of uh, today's environment where, uh, you know, there is no physical attendance in classes or there's no physical uh, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one or look in the eye type of thing. But I think this is to be expected. With or without the pandemic, I can tell you that over the last few years, we have been working towards a system where we are able to take the classroom from a physical, you know, brick and mortar into the seafarer's house and in fact, be able to uh, communicate and be able to impart uh, knowledge. I am not going to say hands-on skills because hands-on skills requires a different approach altogether, but impart knowledge on this. And I think that's where the future is going to lie. Uh, systems for communication, systems for, in fact, uh, you know, online classes or online mentoring or online briefing, uh, safety, all these things have developed to an extent and in the last two years there's been a tremendous rise uh, in the in the fosmas institutes and in, in masas institutes uh, working with the director general of shipping you will see that there has been so much technology that's gone into thing and been approved and that's the big thing it's, it's actually been approved as a means of communication so i see that 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 is how uh, the future is is going to hold for us and the seafarers will also uh, gain from this particular type of knowledge. And I think uh, it's work in progress, but it is a sure that it's going to happen in the future. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, sir. It does. Uh, my team tells me there's something else. Yes. Uh, Captain Ali, uh, this is a question which, of course, I also wanted to ask. And this is, this is regarding the offshore industry, the technologically advanced, the technological advancement in the offshore industry is this in line also with the normal industry? There's been a lot of buzz and a lot of uh, seafarers have asked me personally also. Um, it, is this going at a same exponential rate in the offshore industry that is happening all around the world? Or uh, how is the offshore industry uh, looking at producing new job opportunities in the future? In the, the offshore industry, which is, which is quite uh, unique in the sense that it is uh, more uh, regional, then it is, you know, like the shipping industry is more international. So um, this what actually uh, put this industry a little bit back in terms of technology. Uh, and um, we saw an opportunity to actually consolidate 
the, the logistics, you know, being part of uh, uh, large groups such as Adnuk, uh, and and the, the we uh, were able to actually integrate all the, the, the logistic services, so we are able to deliver the materials uh, that's required for almost seventy uh, locations in the offshore um, under one platform. So um, normally, offshore operators they will uh, or or the, the end users and the clients they they go out and and uh, take uh, a least asset from the market, least manpower, uh, the, the least um, uh, material handling, warehousing. But uh, uh, you know, having a complete solution where you know an operator that uh, able to integrate all of this and provide just a service. Almost like uh, you, you, you're thinking about a DHL service that uh, the, the client will pay per material being transported. They pay per seat for a passenger when, when, when they are, we are transporting that. This, this uh, th which we have been working on for the last three years to develop and successfully we have managed to uh, uh, launch the first phase, which is only the material transportation. And we hope by next year we can even go as far as the passenger transportation. And, and uh, uh, there has been you know, in the industry many attempts uh, to develop uh, such uh, solutions, but because that didn't have the economy of scale that we have here in Adnok, uh, we, uh, we were able, you know, we were very fortunate uh, and, uh, that we were able to have this solution, you know, up and running. Uh, I think uh, this solution definitely developed a lot of uh, job opportunities because uh, you, you will require. Uh, a lot of uh, experts to also monitor performance, uh, analyze and, and uh, enhance uh, the operations. Um, and also we, we, uh, we provided a lot of uh, opportunities in, in the region to uh, you know, um, uh, allow uh, vessel employment uh, yeah, and, and uh, you know, increase utilizations of vessels that were, were you know, not uh, well utilized in, in with the previous model. So uh, this is basically in a nutshell, you know, how we, we, we try to develop an AI technology within the offshore. Thank you very much, uh, Captain Ali. And while you're speaking, and we have, have one question for Ann, I think uh, I'll come back to Ann on this, but uh, since you're speaking and I have you on screen, very interesting question, uh, <laughs> makes me smile. He writes, Captain Muhammad Ali, what advice would you give to an engine cadet who wants to become as good as you? I've become a captain. <laughs> <laughs> I crossed my mind. I didn't no, want to no, say it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, definitely, you know, uh, I mean, I've had this uh, discussions numerous times with many, uh, you know, uh, scholars who would like to uh, get into the shipping industry. Um, it, it is a, a career uh, that, you know, uh, that if you start, don't uh, think that you will let it go as soon as you graduate from the university and look for other. It's a career for you to stay for a few years, and you really uh, need to uh, decide what is the goal that you want to achieve. For me, I would tell him, you know, uh, start your career with a vision to become a chief engineer on one of these, um, you know, uh, tankers or, or LNG carriers or whatever type of vessel that you will be, uh, you know, engaged with, and uh, it, it requires a lot of patience. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, if you think uh, that. Um, uh, you know that, that, that it is the same as you know working on shore. You have to really think carefully because if you don't align your expectation of, of um, what you will see, uh, you will not be able to survive this tough environment. You know, I, I stayed uh, on, on, at sea for 13 years and, and I managed to get through to be the first UA national to sail as a master on the LNG carrier only because I had a det determination and and the. Uh, the uh, a uh, goal to, to become a master. Uh, and whatever challenges I faced throughout, uh, it wasn't easy because also in UAE, we are very fortunate that we have uh, uh, you know, lots of opportunities for UAE nationals to work ashore with a reasonable uh, income. But I chose this career because I, I saw uh, you know, a special future, and, but letting it go from the early, any uh, early stage, uh, you, will, you will not uh, really get the best potential out of this uh, career. You need to uh, go all the way to become a chief engineer. Right. Thank you very much. We are just two minutes left on the clock. I don't want to uh, go on to the, because we've got back and back, uh, back to back schedules. 
And uh, I, I would like to uh, say the next question. Uh, that these are the two last two questions which I'm going to take. One more question. I think uh, Captain Pasi has already mentioned in his speech about the skill developments and impro uh, impro impro improvisation that we need to do. But here's a question from Ansi Ferrer. He says, what skills can we add on to improve our employability for the future? So either Captain Pasi or, or Arne, uh, or Arne uh, you can take this if you want. Question is, what skills can we add on to improve our employability for the future? Arne, can I give this to you? Yes. Um, thank you for the uh, for the question. Well, I, I, in a way, in my presentation or introductory remarks, I, I connected uh, the skills, of course, to the technological <laughs> development that is taking place within the maritime uh, sector. So, uh, I think that is, uh, these are the skills, you know, the, the to to sort of. Uh, be at the pace of the development of the new emerging technologies and green solutions. I think that is that is key. It is changing the ships and it's changing sort of crews on ships in a sense, you know, many ships. And uh, of course, I assume that it's a bit frightening when I talk about uh, autonomous ships, uh, you know, uh, because it is to suggest that there are no seafarers on board, uh, you know, but, uh, but uh, you know, and so that can be frightening. But at the same time, you know, it's... Um, the green transition is not about uh, less uh, employment. You know, there are lots of massive employment into green technology, and we need the operators. We need those who have the skills to to manage the the engines or the the batteries or or whatever the new fuels. So so in a way, it is. Um, I, I think that is um, some will always be there, traditional, but others sort of have to develop new skills which are associated to the technological development. So um, I think that is, um, these are the skills, you know, looking at uh, what is the future in maritime and, and making sure that skills are developed to match that. I think that will be my, my a very general advice. Um, Absolutely. Others here, others here are much well placed uh, to, uh, to give advice coming from the, um, the sector uh, and, uh, and with a massive experience that my, uh, the distinguished uh, panelists and participants have. So, I, I'm very humble at this point, and uh, and I feel that I should not guide uh, future seafarers. Um, I uh, they are better placed people in the in the um, panel to to answer that question. Thank you. Thank you, Arne. And uh, I, this is the last question that I'm going to put to the panel now. And uh, it's again a very general. We can have a whole uh, five-hour uh, workshop on this question, but. Uh, I want to finish uh, in the next one minute. So I would request a very short answer to this. The question is from a person called Akash Malvia. And he says, after looking at today's scenario of electric vehicles, electric vehicles, what can we predict about the future of tanker ships? I don't know who wants to take this. Uh, maybe Captain Pasi or Muhammad Ali. Um, I can take it. I mean, uh, for um, uh, batteries, um, I think um, the way forward is um, uh, hybrid vessels, for mainly for coastal trade. Um, the, the, uh, the main challenge is that battery technology is not yet, um, you know, able to go for a deep sea operation yet. Uh, there are lots of attempts in the industry also uh, to, to actually uh, combine it with other uh, types of fuel, uh, which I think it, it may work. Especially that with batteries, you need lesser fuel. But uh, yeah, I, I think for the time being, as a transition phase, uh, we, we need to focus on on the coastal trade. And then Yara Birkeland, you know, being you know one of the I think examples, if I'm not mistaken, they are using this technology. Um, and and uh, we, we we can also in at Nukelenes, we are planning to go for a first pilot uh, this year for an offshore vessel. Uh, but uh, going for a deep sea operation, it's it's yet uh, you know uh, I think to be de fully developed. So, uh, may I may I just add a little bit onto what uh, the Council General has said? Um, first of all, I agree with uh, Captain Mohammed Ali. You know, uh, that's the technology that is there. It's here to stay. What I want to tell the seafarers is that don't wait till tomorrow, or don't wait till you come ashore. Uh, after your, uh, you know, stint on board and then say, okay, now we will see, but I've still got my job and this. 
your mental conditioning for the future starts today, right here, right now. Prepare yourself because with today's technology and the availability of information on board our ships with the internet, you can actually educate yourself right here or right where you are so that you are better prepared. And I think one of the biggest things to do is mental preparation and mental acceptability on what the future is going to do. There is a huge wide world out there. There is immense amount of knowledge that's available. Filter it down. And then if you have uh, you know, uh, problems or you need to contact somebody, you can still do that. Any of us are still available. I'd be happy to, to guide, mentor, uh, or you know, to talk to anybody uh, that needs uh, that counseling or to, to needs. But I can tell you something. Today's younger generation knows a lot about so many more things than we people do. Uh, you know, so sometimes we have to keep learning from them too. But again, going back, your conditioning and your adaptability and your readiness for tomorrow starts right here, right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Captain Pasi. Thank you, Anyan Flolok. Thank you, Kartik Vishwanathan. Thank you, Captain Mohammad Ali. It's been a glorious moment for all of us. And thank you for coming here, joining us at the inaugural session of the FSM to inaugurate it. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, come back. We'll take a short break here. The next session is at 13.30 India time. And we are going to talk about funding of skill development initiatives to bridge skill gaps, a global approach. And we've got lots of experts, Gillian Carson, uh, from Australia, Captain Sankal Chukla, Chairman of FOSMA, Captain Mahindra Singh Basin, Chairman of MASA, Mr. Abdul Garin Sarang is the Secretary of NUSI, and Mr. Shabi Sarji Hajira, former CND Shipping Corporation of India. We'll meet again at 1.30. You can go on to the lounge, stay in the lounge, don't go away from the platform. I would uh, once again thank all the uh, speakers here and uh, take your leave. Sir, please uh, thank you for your blessings and support. And uh, for the next two days, uh, you please uh, request you, invite you to come and join us at the other sessions and share your thoughts. So with that, I am going to ask you to leave till we uh, are back again at this session in 1330. Uh, have a good uh, break, have a cup of coffee, engage and learn, relearn and learn. Bye. Thank you very much. Back again at 130. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.